Greetings. Welcome to the Angels series, part nine. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be on the book of Judges, chapter six, Gideon. And uh, open up your King James Bible and let's read along all right the um, verse 1 and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord gee who would have thunk right and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. These people had to live hidden away. You know, and mountains are not a good place to live. I mean, you know, you want to live in the plains where there's dirt and where you can grow your crops and stuff. Living in the mountains is that's rough. I mean, can you imagine having to climb up a mountain and climb down a mountain when you have to get water and stuff? I mean, that's rough living. I mean, they were having to hide away from the Midianites. Not good. Verse 3. And so it was when Israel had sown. Um, now, we're talking about, you know, sowing seeds, right? that the Midians came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. In other words, they were destroying their crops. They were starving them out. Guess what, people? Today is May 7th, 2020. Uh, corona, anyone? And we're not talking about a beer, but... Uh, we're going to see the same thing play out in the very, very near future. If you want to know a good place to get seeds, look back a few of my uh, videos before. They got good seeds, good prices too, and they got stuff in stock. So, Haas Tools. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance, no food, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. And they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number. And they entered into the land to destroy it. And that's what's happening in the UK, the EU, and the USSA. The heathens are coming into the land like locusts to destroy it. Verse 6. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Ah, so now we know why the Lord was allowing this. Oh, and you know what, people? Somebody sent me an email. And um, they took the, uh, the so-called bailout stimulus package or whatever it is, how many trillions it is. And they took the number and divided it between the number of people in the United States and divided it. And I forget the exact number, but they said that the $1,200 that they're giving everybody is only 4% of the amount of money. Where's the other 96% going? Uh, let me give you a good guess. Big companies. Yeah, they get the bailout. Uh, they get the, the quarters, the dimes, 
and the nickel and we get the pennies the leftovers and uh, I don't think you understand but uh, we're gonna have I'm my estimation is between 15 to 30 percent inflation just from this bailout and I bet you there'll be more matter of fact I've already noticed uh, a pie at the local grocery store went from being five dollars to six dollars and 29 cents in just a matter of weeks I guess I don't know exactly when the price went up but uh, yeah so all of us that are on fixed pensions and what have you uh, I strongly recommend that you buy things that you need now money in the bank is going to be worthless if you need tools or items that you need for the future I strongly suggest you get them now I don't claim to be an economic guru or anything but I did take economics in college and I have a uh, in business in business college I took two semesters of economics so I basically you know I got a decent understanding better than most people so but uh, what can I tell you and it came to pass when the children of the United States cried unto the Lord because of the uh, children of the devil oh wait that's the Bob translation verse 8 that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them so that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them thus saith the Lord God of Israel I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage and I delivered you out of the hand of of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land and I said unto you I am the Lord your God fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell but ye have not obeyed my voice oh boy verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord ah we got an angel here and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Joash the Abizurite and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites you know they what little food they could get they had to uh, process it you know you got a thresh wheat um, wheat is surrounded a uh, wheat is a type of grass and the outside is got a husk that you can't eat it so you gotta thresh it you gotta beat it to separate the fluff from the kernel uh, if you look at a wheat kernel it's kind of a golden colored it looks like kind of like looks something like rice but it's got a golden color so you got a thresh wheat and they had to hide it from the Midianites otherwise you know they were gonna destroy the food and that's a good way to destroy your enemies starve them out keep that in mind for the near coming future verse 12 and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him the Lord is with thee thou mighty man of valor now if I had an angel say that in front of me I'd be looking around to see who, who 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 are you talking to who I don't what I don't see anybody else are you talking to me you talking to me and Gideon said unto him oh my Lord if the Lord be with us 
Why then has all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him. Now, you got to realize something. You know, you're talking about the angel of the Lord. And sometimes these, this angel is speaks in the first person, saying, I gave you my covenant. I command you to do this. I, the Lord, say this. Um, you know, there's people that did a very, very in-depth study on the angel of the Lord, believing that it was the pre-incarnate Christ, which I tend to agree with. I see no reason not to uh, agree with it. And he says, And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said to him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. You know what? That's the thing about the Lord. He doesn't send you the, the big, strong guy. He sends you the, the little shepherd on the hill, just like with David. David was King David, future King David. He was, like he said, he was the least in his father's house. And here's Gideon saying he, he's the least in his father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid, and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth and he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Wow. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of his staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock. Boy, that's, that's, that's a sign there, right? And consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for, be, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Um, Shalom is peace and Jehovah is, some people say, is a rendering of the name of the Lord. So, the peace of God. Unto this day it is yet an Ophrah of the Ibizarites, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal. Ah, throw down the altar of Baal. And you know, Baal means Lord, and it was associated with Satanism. Throw down the altar of Baal with Satan, that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. So, 
Lord's telling them, get rid of the Satanist stuff. Verse 26, And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in an ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants. Now I'm sure these were faithful people that honored the Lord. And did as the Lord had said unto him, and so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. Now listen to this. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down and the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Jodash, Joash hath done this thing. Then the men of the city sent unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast, cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death while it is yet morning. If he be a god, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. Yeah, good argument. I mean, you know, if Satan's god, let, let Satan argue for himself you know why, why are you sticking up for the devil therefore on that day they called him Jerubbabel, saying let Baal plead against him because he hath thrown down his altar I think Jerubbabel, uh well that's I think that's what they were calling Gideon or maybe maybe his father Joash I'm not sure be honest with you. But uh, Jerubbabel is uh, a term that the they use in the Masonic Lodge. And I'm sure it's has something to do with this story. I don't know all the nuances of the Masonic Lodge. I've read some of that stuff, but it's been a long time. You know, getting old, Alzheimer's setting in. Can't remember everything. I think the hard drive's almost full. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. The valley of Jezreel, that is mentioned, I believe, in the book of Revelation. All right, verse 34. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gather, gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. Now Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali are names of diff the different tribes of Israel. Yeah, and the demon nominational churches will have you believe that uh, they're all Jews. Well, Judah was only one tribe. Asher, Zebulun, Naphtali. All right, and verse 36. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. And it was so. He rose up early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me. And I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, 
but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. So he had a double witness there. Okay, verse chapter 7, Judges 7, verse 1. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, okay, I had it, yeah, I thought it was Gideon, but I wasn't sure. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many, bring them down to the river, and I will uh, try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of Whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Verse 5. So he brought down the people under the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself, likewise every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped will I save you. 300 against an army of Midianites, right? By the 300 men that lapped I will save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men, and the host of the Midianite were beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, thou go thou with Furah, thy servant, down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shalt uh, shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Furah, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites, now remember the Amalekites were uh, grandchildren of Esau, and God said he was going to have war with the Amalekites from generation to generation. They were of the serpent sea line. God did not like them. I cover that in a previous angel study. And the Midianites and the Amal uh, Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that had a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it, that it fell, and overturned it, that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian, and all the host. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel, and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. 
When I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men, hundred men that were with him, now remember there's three 100 men parties. So Gideon and the 300 men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. So they're making it sound like uh, there's an entire army surrounding all the Midianites, and they're smashing these um, clay pots, I guess, and it's you know making a lot of noise, and they're blowing the horn. Remember the old westerns where the uh, the bugler would give the charge uh, cry. You know, I know, I can't, yeah. But, uh, and then the, the cavalry would come charging in. I don't know what their the trumpet blowing was, but, uh, you know, the Midianites probably thought, there's a huge army, and they're hearing all this noise. So, verse 21. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the hosts ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. Even throughout all the host, and the host fled to Beth Shittah in Zeroth, and to the border of Abel Mehola unto Tabath. So here it is the Midianites and the Malachites are so deathly afraid of what's going on they're fighting each other you know they the first person that they come across they're 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 they were basically killing each other they were fighting themselves and the men of israel gathered themselves out of naphtali and out of asher and out of manasseh and pursued after the midianites and gideon sent messengers throughout all mount ephraim saying come down against the midianites and take before them the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb upon the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb, and pursued Midian, and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of Jordan. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus, that thou callest us not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites? And they did chide with him sharply. In other words, they're, you know, they're angry that they're saying, Well, why didn't you have us come help? And he, Gideon, said unto them, What have I done now in comparison of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the Vintage of Abi Ezer? God hath delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison of you? So he's basically flattering them, you know. And maybe it's true. Then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him faint, yet pursuing them. And he said unto the men of Sukkoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, for they be faint. And I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. And the princes of Sukkoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thine army? Oh boy. You know, here it is, they're fighting you know, Gideon is fighting their common enemy, and these are their brethren, and they're they're they don't want to give them any bread, so that give them strength, so they'll have strength to fight with, and they're te they're refusing them. Can you imagine that? And Gideon said, "Therefore, when the Lord hath delivered Ziba and 
Zalmunna, into mine hand. Then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. And he went up thence from Penuel and spake unto them likewise. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Sukkoth had answered him. And he spake also unto the men of Penuel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Ziba and Zalmunna were in Karkor and their hosts with them about 15,000 men. Now you got to realize Gideon's only got 300 people and they're, he's fighting a 15,000 man army. Uh, if I remember correctly, that's about five army divisions. That's, that's a lot. All that were left of all the hosts of the children of the east for there fell an hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in tents on the east of Nobah and Jog Beha, and smote the host, for the host was secure. And when Ziba and Zalmunna fled, he pursued after them, and took the two kings of Midian, Ziba and Zalmunna, and discomforted all the host. And Gideon the son of Joash returned from battle before the sun was up, and caught a young man of the man of the men of Sukkoth, and inquired of him. And he described unto him the princes of Sukkoth, and the elders thereof, even threescore and seventeen men. That's seventy-seven men. And he came unto the men of Sukkoth, and said, Behold, Ziba and Zalmunna, with whom ye did upbraid me, saying, Are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary? And he took the elders of the city and thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Sukkoth. So I guess he, uh, I'm not sure exactly what he did. Maybe he took them and dragged them through the thorns and briars. You know, can you imagine me drag through a a bunch of roses you know <laughs> it would rip up your skin pretty good verse 17 and they beat down the tower of penul and slew the men of the city then said he unto ziba and zalmunna what manner of men were they whom ye slew at tabor and they answered as thou art so were they each one resembled the children of a king and he said they were my brethren, even the sons of my mother. As the Lord liveth, if ye had saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Jether his firstborn, Up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. Then Ziba and Zalmunna said, Rise now and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Ziba and Zalmunna, and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us. So he want, they want Gideon to be their, their king, I guess. Both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Now listen to this. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that you would give me every man the earring of his prey, for they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment, and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey, and the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold. I don't know what a shekel weighs, but it sounds like a lot. Besides ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian and besides the chains that were about their camels necks. Verse 27. And Gideon made an ephod thereof and put it in his city, even in Ophrah, and all Israel went thither, a, a whoring after it. So they were worshiping this thing, like an idol. Which thing became a snare, or a trap, unto Gideon and to his house. Thus was 
Midian subdued before the children of Israel so that they lifted up their heads no more. And the country was in quietness 40 years in the days of Gideon. And Jerubbabel, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten. That's 70 sons. Boy, he must have been really busy, huh? For he had many wives. Boy, 70 kids, 70 sons. How many daughters? That was one busy guy. Let me tell you something. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son, whose name he called Abimelech. And Gideon the son of Joash died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of Joash's father in Ophrah of the Abizorites. Now here's where it turns bad. And it came to pass as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Balaam and made Baal Barith their god. Now if I remember correctly, Barith um means covenant covenant of the wrong lord i guess have you ever heard of the brit ish brit means covenant and ish means man so to be british means you are man of the covenant or the covenant man so verse 34 and the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jerubbabel, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. And you know what's sad is later on they killed most of Gideon's children because they wanted to make one of them a king or their leader. I think it was Abimelech. So can you imagine that? The guy goes and fights their battles for them, wins a great victory for them in the name of the Lord. And how do they repay him? They kill his sons. Really. That's how they repay him. People you can't trust hardly anybody nowadays. My little trip to Arkansas with a uh, so-called Christian brother taught me that. I guess we could read Judges chapter 9. And then we'll close this out. Verse 1. And Abimelech the son of Jerubbabel went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren. Now remember, he was a uh, concubine, not necessarily a, uh, a wife of Gideon, and communed with them and all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you either that all the sons of Jerubbabel, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver, seventy pieces of silver, out of the house of baal Barith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. So he hired the worst of the worst. And he went unto his father's house in Ophrah and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbabel, being threescore and ten persons, upon one stone, notwithstanding yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, 
Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Shall I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God a man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. Now remember, the fig tree was a symbol of Judah. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. Now the vine was uh, generally Israel. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all, all the trees unto the bramble. Do you know what a bramble is? Let's take a look. According to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and uh, if you don't have one, wouldn't be a bad idea to have one. Uh, Guy was a language scholar. He spoke over 20 languages. He knew Hebrew and Greek, which are the Old Testament, New Testament Bible languages. He knew Latin. I mean, the guy was a scholar. And he was a believer. There's a lot of Bible definitions in his um, 1828 dictionary. But he says, A bramble is a raspberry bush or a blackberry bush, a general name of the genus Rubus, of which there are several species. They are armed with prickles, hence in common language, any rough prickly shrub. In other words, they got thorn-like things. So... Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, and that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbabel and his house, and have done unto him according to to the deserving of his hands. Now remember, this guy had killed 70, approximately 70 something brothers of Gideon. His brothers, half brothers. Verse 17 For my brother, for my father fought for you and, and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons. Three score and ten persons upon one stone, stone, and upon one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbabel, and with his house that this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out of Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem, and the house of Milo. And let fire come out from the house of from the men of Shechem, and from the house of Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled, and went to Beer. I wonder if that's Corona, and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit. God sent an evil spirit. Whoa, dude. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech that the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbabel might come and their blood be laying upon Abimelech their brother which slew them and upon the men of Shechem which aided him in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains and they dropped all that came along that way by them and it was told Abimelech. And Gal, the son of Ebed, 
came with his brethren, went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went out into the fields and gathered their vineyards and trowed their grapes and made merry and went into the house of their God and did eat, drink, and cursed Abimelech. And Gal, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech? And who is Shechem that we should serve him? Is not he the son of Jerubbabal and Jebal his officer? Serve the men of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for why should we serve him? And would to God this people were under my hand, then would I remove Abimelech. And he said to Abimelech, Increase thine army and come out. And when Jebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gial, the son of Ibed, his anger was kindled. And he sent messengers unto Abimelech privily, saying, Behold, Gal, the son of Ibed, and his brethren be come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against thee. Now therefore, up by night, thou and the people that is with thee, and lie in wait in the field, and it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early and set up, set upon the city, and behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against thee, thou mayest thou do to them as thou find occasion. And Abimelech rose up and all the people that were with him by night, and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. And Gaul, I guess the four companies is like a square. You got one on each corner so that, you know, I guess they were hidden in a field in the road on the road and then when um the, the they come out they're surrounded basically you know and you caught them surprised you know they're not ready for battle and gal the son of ibab went out and went stood in the entering of the gate of the city and abimelech rose up and the people that were with him from lying in wait and when gal saw the people, he said to Zebal, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. And Zebal said unto him, Thou seest the shadow of the mountains as if it were they were men. And Gal spake again and said, See, there come people down from the middle of the land. And another company came along by the plain of Meoninim. I hope I'm pronouncing these right. Then said Zebal unto him, where is now thy mouth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were you were really boasting last night. Where's that? Where was that? Where's that mouthy mouth of yours? Where is now thy mouth? Wherewith thou sayest, Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? Is not this the people that thou hast despised? Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. And Gal went out before the men of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him. And many were overthrown and wounded, even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dwelt at Aruramma, and Zibel thrust out Gal and his brethren, that they should not dwell in Shechem. And it came to pass on the morrow that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech, And he took the people and divided them into three companies and laid wait in the field and looked and behold, the people were come forth out of the city and he rose up against them and smote them. And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city and the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day and he took the city and slew the people that were therein and beat down the city and sowed it with salt." And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard it, they entered in to and hold of the house of the god Berith. Not the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not the god of Israel. No, the god Berith. And it was told to Abimelech, and all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to Mount Zalmon. He and all the people that were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bow, a bow from the tree and took it and laid it upon his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, What ye have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. And the people likewise cut down every man his bow and followed Abimelech and put them to the hold and set the hold on fire upon them 
so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died, also about a thousand men and women. Then went Abimelech to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and took it. And there was a strong tower within the city, and thither fled all the men and women and all they of the city and shut it up uh, and shut it to them and got them up to the top of the tower. And Abimelech came to the tower and fought against it and went hard unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire. And a certain woman, and a certain woman cast a piece of millstone upon Abimelech's head and all to break his skull. So here it is, this woman's up high up in the tower and she throws down a piece of a millstone, probably not a pebble, probably a good sized chunk of rock and it hits Abimelech in the skull and it said it cracked his skull. Verse 54, And he called hastily unto the young man his armor bearer and said unto him, Draw thy sword and slay me, that men say not of him, me, a woman slew him, and his young man thrust him through, and he died. I guess he knew full well he wasn't going to make it. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done unto his father, in slaying his seventy brethren. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbabel, who was Gideon, of course. So, all right. Well, that's this is the end, and uh, I just I wasn't going to finish up with Judges chapter nine, but uh, you know, there's a, a what they call regicide. Uh, being in the royal family was not always a good thing because. You know, if you were, if you had somebody that was king and he had a bunch of brothers and the brothers were all fighting to see who was going to be the king, uh, a lot of times they would kill the rest of the family so they wouldn't have any competition. That's an old story, people. That's an old story. And you got to realize, Judges is the um, seventh book in the Bible. This happened early on. I mean, this is before... This is before, um, long before David, hundreds of years before David, if memory serves me correctly. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In His precious name, amen.